soup, no soup, no soup, no soup, no soup, no soup. There is more than one epidemic in New York right now, and one is feeding the other. The economic carnage of COVID-19 has pushed homelessness to record levels. No soup. There is more homelessness in this city than at any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. The worst hit by far have been black and brown people. And coronavirus has made this worse. I'm in Harlem to meet a man who spent most of his life in and out of homeless shelters. I survived these streets since I was a kid, you know, sleeping in the streets. Shams DeBaron is now an activist they call the homeless hero. The thing about when you're street homeless, you gotta always find a safe space to go to, a safe place. There are several shelters near this street, but it's almost 10 o'clock when they shut their doors for the night. If there are so many shelters here, why are we seeing so many people on the streets? Because the shelters are so unsafe that people would rather be in the streets than be in those shelters. That's how unsafe the shelters are. I mean, this is a really weird area, I have to say. It's something like yeah. stepping into another city. Yeah, yeah. And like stepping back in time. What's going on, brother? All right, all right. How are you surviving now? I was robbed here earlier. That's why I'm here. Where are you sleeping tonight? Like this, the chair. So you saying you're going to sleep in a chair, yeah. in that chair. Where are you going to sleep? Where are you going to put that I chair? I don't know yet. <laughs> and you've been able to protect yourself from COVID? Yeah. I it's just fine. want you to be safe, That's though. During the pandemic, depending on ethnic group, homeless people in shelters were up to three times as likely to die of COVID than in the general New York population. All right, come on, man, come on, relax, man. We're trying to help you. We're trying to help you, baby. I'm right here, baby, I'm right here. They found a guy who is clearly in trouble, clearly been taking something, and appears to be overdosing. What's going on? Oh, yeah, you know the cat? We have somebody that's obviously, that is maybe on a yeah. substance. Um, unfortunately, this is what exists. This is homelessness in New York City. The use of drugs and the criminality that comes with that is another reason why many are unwilling to use the shelters. New York spends over $3 billion of taxpayers' money on the homeless every year, mostly on shelters run by public, private, and charity providers. Several have been investigated for alleged profiteering and misappropriation of funds. In New York, if you're homeless, you have a right to shelter. By law, the city must put a roof over your head. And if you're a single male in Manhattan, you start here at the Bellevue. Shams wants to show me what happens when people enter the system. You come in here, they process you, and then they send you to an assessment shelter. The assessment shelter kind of finds out, are you a working guy, are you a person dealing with substance use disorder, mental illness, whatever, and then they send you to what they call an appropriate facility. So this is ground zero for a lot this, of people? Yeah. This is ground zero. This is where it all starts. Shams was first homeless as a child in the 80s and has seen it all. Now he's trying to break the cycle he sees repeating in others, like 21-year-old Aaron. How long have you been homeless in the, in the system? About a year. About a year. Been... It's obvious how one problem leads to another. I'm going to be honest with you, like... I went through a lot of I went through a lot of anxiety. I went through like separation, like anxiety through my family. I felt like alone. You understand what I'm saying? 
my advice. Focus on your housing and keep that going. Just move towards the housing. Yes, sir. And don't just let yourself be maneuvered or played or anything like that. This is an ecosystem that's about money. It's really striking seeing Shams at work here, but he's become so activated by this whole issue that he's literally stopping everybody going past and asking them their story and then giving them advice and telling them where they should be going and who they should be ringing and what they're entitled to. I can't sit up, I can't walk, I can't, I can't stay up for, for too long. I'm I schizophrenic. I'm not supposed to be out here this late night. Guess what? Terrell and his wife Madeline have been at a couple shelter. They've had to come here to re-register. So what, what's this? It's supposed to be bologna for lunch. Is it moldy? Yeah. That's what you get in the, in the system. They fed us that for a week, bruh. Ever since we reported that, they've been trying to kick us out the shelter. Because you were complaining about stuff, you think like moving this is why you've really been kicked out? out my... Yeah. No. I it's will, disgusting. Uh, it really is. Yeah. And that's the reason why we got kicked out, because they used that against us. I wouldn't wish that on my own enemy. I felt like I was still in prison, man. man. This is why I do what I do, man. Because this is real. You know, when y'all hear me talk, this is what it's about. This is this is us. So let me tell you something. They got whole hotels that are specifically designed for couples. Go pursue that. Take advantage of that. Y'all be careful, all right? Thanks. Good luck. Good luck, Madeline. Hope it goes OK. That's tough because they had been complaining about the conditions in their shelter. And that's probably why they were shut out. The sad thing is that you can sit here all day and you'll get that all day. We contacted the New York mayor's office for a response, but they didn't come back to us. What is true is that the shelters do prevent tens of thousands sleeping on the streets every night. The thing that got him upset was that he was being given rotten food. Why would you feed adults this food and think it's sustainable? This is criminal to me. Yeah. And it's about money. To Shams, there's a huge gap between the way the homeless are treated and what New York spends on the shelters, which can average $3,000 a month for each adult. Listen, this goes back to slavery. In slavery, they fed us like this. Yo, give them the scraps. In COVID, when you look at the health disparities, one of the first things that came out, they said, it's because of our diets. It's because of the way we eat. That's a correlation with what we got passed on through generations coming up from slavery because all we was able to get was crap. And that is what they feed us in these shelters. So there is a connection. And that's what I speak to. Despite the shelters, more than 3,000 people sleep rough on New York's streets. At least 60,000 are in the shelters, including more than 21,000 children. But he's good otherwise. Yeah, he's good. But in Brooklyn, we found a tiny charity helping people escape the cycle. Chips was set up to help single mums. How is the therapy going? The therapy? Um, it's going okay. The women are referred here by shelters and other charities, but are hand-picked. To qualify, they must agree to various conditions and commit to finding work. Were you compensated? No. Okay. Reason being is because I need the promotional work and because okay. my name isn't really out there like that. I just want to make sure that um, you're being led in the right path and that you're not being taken advantage of. But I'm so proud of you. So I think... Sharon Lewis is a mentor to the women. I love your mohawk. Hello. Hi, Sharon. I'm Krishnan. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Very nice to meet you. 
likewise. With just eight rooms, they offer women a home for one year to get them back on their own feet. So we just have a variety of supplies, you know, it's pampers, it's wives. Mum just has to come in and just bring her own personal belongings. I mean, what kind of state do the new mums arrive in? I mean, it must be really terrifying to be pregnant and not to have a place to stay. You know, by the time they come here, they exhaust all other possibilities, you know, so they are stressed out, you know, they're panicking. So my job is just to reassure them, you know, we are here. In normal times, Rochelle makes a living as a singer. When COVID hit, she lost all her work and any means of providing for her new baby, Kabir. Did you look at what the city would have provided you with? Okay, my experience with that was basically one that left me stunned. I'm a diabetic and I walked with my food preparation because this is protocol for someone in my position. And the guard took my food he said, you're not allowed to take your food in there. And it, it just felt horrible because I felt like no one listened to what I was saying. No one looked at my particular circumstances and they just chucked me to the side. So this place must have felt like a lifeline. Lifeline, breath of fresh air, um, ray of sunshine, everything good and positive, rainbows, everything. This place allows me a chance to get back on my feet to do the things that I have to do, so I do not keep depending on the system. This place is a great example of how support should work. You know, you have clients here who need the services, need the help for just a short bit of time, but then are very determined to get on, get out there, and stand on their own two feet again. And it's a real contrast to the cyclical problems that we saw of men in those shelters who often felt they just couldn't escape it. For most homeless people in New York, the way out is either a long wait for public housing or qualifying for a state-funded voucher and finding a landlord who will accept it. Shams has just got a tiny apartment in Harlem, but the story of how he got here is decades long. Let's go. Where did it all begin? I guess, you know, uh, we could say that it began at the age of two when I was placed in foster care. My mother and father were um, uh, heroin addicts uh, from the late 1960s and early 70s. And consequently, I ended up in foster care. He's now applying for a grant from a charitable trust to be able to continue as a homelessness activist. When I got COVID, uh, I was sent to a, a, a quarantine hotel. And by the third day, I almost died. Give me a second. And I felt that this damn city this country has done us wrong. And here I am. I'm going to die like this. And after 21 days of quarantine, I re-entered the shelter system, the congregate shelter. And it was worse than when I left it. The coronavirus was all through the shelter. I said, this has to change. Um, I know that we don't know each other yet, um, and we're really thankful um, for, for just how much you shared and like the depth and vulnerability that you shared with, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. You got quite emotional there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all wasn't supposed to get that. <laughs> but, you know, this is part of who I am and, and why I'm doing what I'm doing. It, I know that it can't be done without being real. I mean, to what extent is there a homelessness industry and a shelter industry in New York? It's millions of dollars. What are we talking? Three billion dollars, over three billion dollars to, to service this industry. There's profit in this ecosystem. The same way there's profit in the slave trade. 
as soon as you make that jump, you go, whoa, that's quite a jump. You know, I mean, do you think that's a fair comparison? In slavery, they traded us around like cattle. We was a commodity. They made money off of us. We didn't have any choice over where we go or what we do. Do you feel like a commodity now? Of course. During the pandemic, shelters full of people became COVID hotspots. The city did act, moving hundreds from shelters into hotel rooms. But that sparked a whole new problem. So Shamus has asked us to meet him at the hotel where he was living until very recently. And it's a really controversial story that he's going to tell us about because there was a big row about the people being put there because it's right up here in the rich end of Manhattan. It's just here. It is that building there. It is a posh hotel. It's a big posh hotel, full of homeless people. Before getting his apartment, Shams was one of over 300 single men moved into the four-star Lucerne Hotel on the Upper West Side. It's a really nice part of Manhattan, and who wouldn't want to live in a place like this? But the row over the Lucerne Hotel became a question of, if you had the money, to live in the Upper West Side. Who do you want to keep out? Some welcomed the homeless men with offers of help and open arms, but others were outraged and wanted them out. I'm surprised how nice it is, to be honest. If you go online on their website and you see the rooms and stuff, that's the rooms that we're in. And it was in September that the mayor uh, said that we was not acceptable in this community and said we had to go. A residence group mobilised, winning a legal fight to get the mostly black men moved. The 50 or so men still there will be transferred back to a shelter. So do you think they didn't want homeless people here or that they didn't want poor black people here? Oh, definitely poor black and brown people. The reality is that this community, there's a lot of wealthy people in the community. And a lot of them feel like if there's too many black people in here, that the property value goes down. And if you're being really honest with yourself, if you lived here and you'd bought your apartments, how would you have felt if you'd looked out and seen you guys here? I would have looked at what the facts are. The fact is that this is COVID. This is a temporary situation. It's not permanent. It's done to protect people from getting COVID. So, my humanity would supersede any thought of any issue of my rent value. Accused of snobbery and racism, the only member of the residence group prepared to speak to us on camera is Cheryl Warfield, an opera singer. She says the men must be moved for their own welfare as well as the residents. This is an issue about a community that is in crisis. A community that, where I felt safe, that I no longer feel safe. Should my safety be trumped by several hundred men who have been brought in temporarily that could end up permanently without getting the services that they need. She's worried the hotel setting is inappropriate for people who may have serious mental health problems. You know, have you ever spoken to any of them? Uh, I don't think that, that I, don't, I don't see how that would provide any specific value. Um, Some of the men themselves say the opposition is rooted in racism. Absolutely not because I am a person of color. I have lived here for 27 years. I have always felt welcomed here. The problem is that of safety. And I no longer feel safe on the Upper West Side. The New York mayoral race is underway. Voting is in November, 
and activists, including Shams, are forcing homelessness onto the agenda. The city and the state need to work in partnership to pass city and state budgets, which are in the billions, to rapidly rehouse all of the people experiencing homelessness. All right, tell the truth. The truth is we are a city facing an historic crisis. They're challenging the billions that go into the shelter system that doesn't lead to homes for the homeless. Because we had a crisis of affordability. The city operates in a way that don't give a damn about none of these communities. That ain't right. On any side, all they give a damn about is these rich real estate developers. That ain't right. And they're using us as pawns in this political chess game for profit. Yeah. Yeah. Do you stand with me? Yeah. Y'all gonna let them get away with this? No. We stand with Sham the Man. We stand with Sham the Man. We stand with Sham the Man. Responding to COVID, the current mayor of New York set up a task force on racial inclusion to target communities worst hit by the pandemic. His office says they're committed to providing hundreds of thousands of affordable homes. With its right to shelter and vast budget, perhaps New York really should have cracked the homelessness problem. But what we found is that the system is in real crisis. Not just failing, but hated by so many people on so many sides. But what we've also encountered is very much a story of our times, of the deep divisions in American politics. Homeless people who have now become activists believe that politics and activism is the way for them to change things for themselves. They have literally decided they're not going to take this lying down anymore. Sure. Yeah, that's why I need to stand in front of you. This is your mic. Rochelle, who we met in Brooklyn, is back in the studio for the first time since the pandemic began. It's part of her commitment to the Chips Women's Shelter to get back to supporting herself. Hello, hello. Nice to be here, Lydia. How are you today? I feel good. I feel confident. I feel like, you know, hey, things are turning around and regardless of COVID, things are on the up and up. She's making a podcast to promote her music under her stage name, Empress Petra. Take it away. Okay, okay, okay. It's the rules, the rules of engagement. When you're on the battlefield, you better know what you're doing. It's a lot of time you need someone to listen to your plight and assist you in the right way. Tell me why do they criticize when we can see that they've lost their way? All right. <laughs>